Hi, welcome to my video tutorial for this sweater, the Market Cardi or Cardigan. Um, the first thing you should know is that this is not an all-encompassing tutorial. There are parts that I don't 100% cover in this video. Um, the entire pattern is for free on my blog. It's linked below. I have sizes extra small to 5XL. The one that I'm making in this video is a size small. Another thing is that I changed the pattern a little bit after I finished filming the video and making the sweater and I didn't want to make another sweater. So there are a couple of clips that don't necessarily match um, in the video um, because I changed the pattern, but I wanted to show you how to do the changes that I did. It'll, it'll make sense, I guess. Maybe it might not. But anyways, all of the sizes are on the blog, um, size charts, everything. I filmed this video over the course of a lot of days if that's proper English, but my sleeves change a lot. So ignore my sleeves changing, ignore the lighting changing. Just you know, ignore all the parts that you're like, hmm, that seems weird. It's really quite simple. So yeah, this video is supposed to go along with the written pattern and help you kind of through that, but it's not like a completely standalone video tutorial. Check out my blog with the written pattern for all of your materials that you'll need. Um, make sure, making sure that you choose the right size. And that's everything, I think. If not, I'll put, I'll say, I'll put another clip in here and, and say something else. But enjoy. Um, leave me a comment here or on my blog if you have any questions, I guess. I'll do my best to answer them. But if you do make this, um, take a pic. Post it on Instagram. Tag me in it so I can see. Because I would love to see. So I hope you enjoy. So to start, we're going to make a slip knot, which is super easy. You're just gonna make kind of like a, a cross situation there and whichever strand is underneath, you're gonna put it over and through, obviously not all the way through. So you're gonna basically bring up a loop there and then just tighten it. And that's a slip knot on your hook. And we're going to start by chaining 63 or however long you want yours to be. So to chain, you're going to yarn over. I like to hold on to this loop just to make sure it's not moving all over the place when you're yarning over. So holding on to that, yarn over. And then what I like to do is I like to hold on to this knot here because otherwise you can, if you're holding on to this, sometimes you can just tighten your slip knot and we don't want that. So holding on to the knot, using your hook to pull up a loop and that's a chain. So again, Yarn over, pull up a loop, chain. So go ahead and chain the right number of stitches and then we'll get started on row one. So we're gonna double crochet for this entire row starting in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three, this chain right here, as you can see. So to double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, go into the chain Yarn over and pull up a loop. So you have three loops on your hook right now. Yarn over again, and you're gonna pull through two. Yarn over again and pull through the remaining two. And that's a double crochet. So again, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. So you have three. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So we finished row one. And after each row, we're gonna chain. So how many you chain is gonna depend on the next row. Right now, the next row is going to be treble crochets. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and turn. Now starting in this first stitch here, we're gonna do a treble crochet. To do a treble crochet, you yarn over twice before you do anything. And then you're gonna insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So now you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over again and pull through two. Yarn over again and pull through the last two. So you're yarning over and pulling through three times. So we finished our second row, which is just treble crochets. And the next row, actually the next three rows we're gonna do are, I guess it's a mesh stitch. I don't know, it's a double crochet one, chain one kind of stitch. So chain two. Turn your work. And then in the first stitch, we're gonna do uh, just one double crochet. 
So we have one double crochet, and then the next thing we're gonna do is chain one. Now for these chains, you wanna make sure they're not too tight. You wanna make sure they're like a little bit looser than you normally would, just cause we have to go back into these, and if they're too tight, it'll kind of warp the width of your row. So chaining one, we're gonna skip the next stitch, and we're gonna double crochet into the stitch after that. So again, chain one, making sure it's not too tight, skipping the next stitch, and going into the stitch after that, doing a double crochet. So do this for the rest of the row and come back when you're done. Okay, so I'm at the end of my row three. I've done my double crochet chain one and I'm doing my last double crochet into the last stitch here. Um, and because we've chained an odd number of stitches for our foundation, it'll work out perfectly and you should have just a double crochet in the last stitch and be done. So we've chained two, turn our work, and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did for row three. We're gonna do in row four and row five. So double crochet into the first stitch. So we'll be going into the last double crochet from the last row. So double crochet into here, chain one, and then just double crochet. So we're skipping this chain here, and we're gonna double crochet into the double crochet from the previous row. And again, just do that all the way across and then come back when you've done row four and row five. So we've finished rows four and five. So the next row, row six, is going to be a row of treble crochets. So once you're done row five, chain three and turn. So just a reminder, yarn over two, insert your hook, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. For this row, you just have to remember that you need to crochet into our chain stitches that we did. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you wanna go through both loops so that it looks like a regular stitch and then just do your regular treble on top of that. So just continue with treble crochet for the rest of the row. So we've done row six and then for row seven, we're gonna do a slight variation on this mesh stitch. Um, so just chain two and turn. So, but we're gonna start off with one double crochet in the first stitch. And then of course, chain one, making sure it's not too tight. Skipping the next stitch, we're gonna double crochet into the one after that. And then that's kind of the sequence that we're gonna do. So it's a sequence of three stitches essentially, one double crochet, one chain, and another, another double crochet. We're gonna start again with another double crochet so there's two next to each other, except for on the ends. So chain one, double crochet, skipping a stitch, double crochet again, and chain one. So it's a bit different than the mesh stitch from before, so continue doing that. So two double crochets and then a chain until you've reached the end and you have one stitch left. So I've reached the end. I did two double crochets and a chain one. And we can see there's two stitches left. This one we're skipping, and then this one we're just gonna do one double crochet to end the sequence. So we, we're ending with one double crochet, and we started with one double crochet. And the reason this works is because it's a sequence of three, and we, again, our base is a odd multiple of three. So the next row, you're gonna chain three, because we're gonna do this same thing, just with treble crochets. So chain three and turn. So again, we're starting with one treble crochet, so yarn over twice into this first stitch here. Do a regular treble, and then we're gonna chain one, because remember we only have one stitch at the beginning and one stitch at the end, so chain one, skipping this chain, and we're gonna do two trebles into the top of these two double crochets. So continue the treble crochet two chain one pattern until the end, and then come back when you're done. So we've finished row eight and chained two and turn, and then we're just gonna do a row of double crochets. For row 10 at the beginning, just chain two, and we're gonna do the regular double crochet mesh stitch. So it's just double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. And then do that for the entire row. Once you're done row 10, chain three and turn, and then do two rows of just regular treble crochet. So 11 and 12 are just regular treble crochet all the way across. So we're on row 
19. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how to do it because we haven't done it yet, but it's super easy. It's just a treble crochet mesh stitch. So treble and then chain one, treble, chain one. So treble into the first stitch, chain one, making sure it's not too tight, and then skip one, and then treble into the next one. And then continue that until the end of the row. Okay, so once you're done row 24, this is what your back panel should pretty much look like if you followed along with what I've done. Um, and now we're gonna get started on the shoulder slash neck area and go into the first front panel. All right, for row 25, if you haven't chained three already, chain three. And then we're gonna do 20 treble crochets. So once you have your 20 treble crochets, we're gonna do a treble crochet two together. So that will give us 21 stitches. So for the decrease, essentially, what we're doing is yarn over twice, insert your hook and start off the normal way. So pull up a loop, you have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over again, and insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, you'll have five loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through three. So for row 28, it is a double double crochet mesh stitch so this one here so in order to increase in the first stitch we're going to do two double crochets so yarn over insert your hook into the first stitch here pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and we're going to do the same thing in the same stitch so yarn over insert your hook back into that same stitch that we just used and do a double crochet like normal. So once we've done our increase, we're gonna continue the row like normal. So chain one, skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next one. And double crochet again. Chain one, skip a stitch, go into the next one. And then double crochet again and continue that till the end of the row. Morgan from another day. Uh, ignore the fact that this is only a couple of rows, but this is essentially the front panel. Um, as I mentioned, the pattern changed a bit once I completed the sweater and filming the video, so I'm just here to fix the things that are now incorrect. So this is our first like increased row. So we increased here, just like in the clip before, but we've reached the end, and this would be the end of our pattern usually, and it should be the end of the row, but we still have one stitch left. So we're just gonna double crochet into the last stitch. At the end of row 28, chain two and turn, and then the next row is gonna be a row of double crochets increasing on the last stitch. All right, row 29 is just double crochet for the entire row. And then once you reach the last stitch, we're just gonna increase. So it's just two double crochets into the last stitch. So there's one, then another one and then chain two and turn. We're gonna increase again in this first stitch. And then we're gonna do the double crochet double mesh for the entire row. So chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet into the third one, and then double crochet again, chain, skipping a stitch, double crochet, and then continue with that for the rest of the row. Once you're done row 30, chain three and turn, and then we're just gonna do a treble crochet mesh for the entire row. But once you reach the last stitch, we're gonna increase. So I've reached the end of row 31. I did a treble crochet and chain one, and then we're gonna do two treble crochets in the last stitch. And then chain three and turn. Do two treble crochets again in the first stitch. And then just treble crochet in each stitch for the entire row. Once you're done row 32, chain two and turn, and then just double crochet in each stitch across, and then 
to double crochet increasing in the last stitch. Once you're done row 33, chain three and turn, and then do two treble crochets in the first stitch, and then do a row of regular treble crochets. Once you're done row 34, chain two and turn, and then we're just gonna do double crochet mesh all the way across, but we're gonna increase in the last stitch, so just come back when you have one stitch left. So I've done a double crochet and I chained one, and then we're gonna do two double crochets into the last stitch. Chain two and turn. We're going to increase, but we're not going to do a two double crochet. So just do a regular double crochet into the first stitch. We're gonna chain one, but we're not gonna skip a stitch. So we're gonna go right into this one and do another double crochet. And then because we chained one, but we didn't skip a stitch, we've increased there. For the rest of the row, just continue with the regular double crochet mesh stitch. It'll match up with the row from before. After row 36, there are no more increases that we need to do. Uh, so just refer to the written pattern for the rest of the row instructions. So once you've finished your first front panel and you've fastened off at the end, what you're gonna do is repeat every step of the first front panel. So first thing you're gonna do is fasten your yarn onto the other corner. So for the first front panel, essentially we started right here and then we kind of went in and then we did this first row with the first decrease and then we just kept going. So we're gonna repeat the same thing. And so the reason that we're starting on this corner is so that all of the steps are the same, if that makes sense. So you're gonna go into the first stitch here of this row essentially and you're going to fasten on your yarn so what you're going to do is you're going to insert your hook and pull through what i like to do is tie it you don't have to do that you can just kind of pull up a couple of loops so i tie on the yarn i'll put my hook back in again so it's that first stitch in the row pull up a loop and just chain three We're now done two of our sleeves, so you should have two of these rectangles, unless you've opted for the short sleeve. Before we attach the sleeves though, we're gonna do kind of an inner lining for the body. So we're gonna crochet up along the entire inside seam. And at the same time while we're doing that, we're gonna create the ties on the front. So grab your um, body section of your cardigan and your 5.5 millimeter hook and your yarn. You can either use the same colored yarn or you could use a different colored yarn if you want to do kind of a contrast situation, um, and then we're going to get started. We have our yarn on our hook, and we're going to fasten on to the inside bottom corner of one of the front panels. So starting here, we're going to fasten on the same way we did before. So kind of just insert your hook. There's no really correct way to do this um, because there's no stitches that, you, that are clear to stitch into, especially because we have different lengths. So just pull your yarn through, and again, I like to tie it, you don't need to. Insert your hook, right? And then we're gonna pull up a loop and we're just gonna chain one because we're gonna do a single crochet around. Okay, here we are. So we've fastened on here at the bottom and we chained one because we're just gonna do single crochets around. So again, there's no exact way to do this because there's no exact stitches. So you just kind of have to do your best and hope for the best. So next I'm gonna crochet into this stitch here. And I'm also crocheting over the end just to make weaving and ends a little bit easier at the end. The practice that I like to do is once you're done, just kind of see where it naturally falls. Like you don't wanna force it in either directions to make it too loose or too tight. So kind of see naturally where your hook would go, like as if you were crocheting into the next stitch. So I'm gonna go into this chain right here. Sometimes it's going to be a bit tight, but that's fine. Then I'm going to go up here. So 
So we're just single crocheting all along. To single crochet, what you're gonna do is you don't yarn over at all. Um, you just, let's see, I'm going go in here. So you just insert your hook, grab your yarn and pull up a loop, or try to at least. Yarn over, pull through two. It's quite simple. So you can see here, my stitches are getting to be a little bit too far apart. So I just have to be mindful of that. And again, you can do a section of this and then see if you like how it looks, if it's a little wonky or not. Um, don't be afraid to redo it. It's better to do it multiple times and have it done well and to your liking than just do it once and then you don't like the outcome. So this isn't too bad. Continue single crocheting along the inside until you get to the last increase that we did on the front panel. Um, so it'll be like the point in the, in the front. Okay, so I've reached the end of the straight section here and the point of the front. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to do a chain. It's gonna be a long chain. It's gonna be one of our one of our front ties. So just chain for as long as you want your tie to be. And then we're gonna do a slip stitch all the way back. We're just gonna do a slip stitch all the way back to get to reinforce this and then to get us back to here. So once you're done your chain for your tie, you're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do slip stitches into these back loops here. So there's the front of the chain which are these two, and then there's the back, which has a loop, another loop on the back. So you're gonna insert your hook into that loop there, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're not gonna yarn over again, you're just gonna pull the top loop through the back loop. And then that's a slip stitch. And you, make, you wanna make sure it's not too tight, it's really easy to make these really tight, just make sure they are not too tight because then it'll scrunch up and it'll be kind of stiff. So again, into that loop on the back, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through the last loop. So continue doing that until you've reached the end of your chain. I'm at the end of my chain, so I have two left, so I'll just show you those. And then the last one here, it might be a little bit tricky to tell just make sure you get them all, and then that's our kind of chain thing. Once you're done your whole chain, you'll be back at your front panel, and we're going to continue with the single crochets. So again, kind of just see where it falls naturally, and then start there. That's good. Eh, that's fine. And then just continue the same thing that you were doing before, all the way around until you've reached the other kind of peak thing here. I've reached the peak corner thing on the other side at the same spot, and now we're just gonna do the exact same thing that we did with this one. So do the same number of chains, turn and then do slip stitches back in the back loop on the back of the chain. I'm at the end of my second front strand, so I have one stitch left to do. So this will be the last slip stitch, and then again, the same thing that we did before, doing single crochets all the way down to the end of the front panel. And then we're almost done. So I'm on my last two stitches for the front panel here. And then once you're done, just chain one and fasten off. So to do that, just cut the yarn and pull through. And then we'll just have to weave in these ends. We now have our two front ties. So to start sewing on the sleeve, the first thing you wanna do is grab your sleeve, obviously, um, your darning needle and a stitch marker. Um, and then you wanna find the exact middle of your sleeve. So we have 45 stitches. So the middle stitch will be the 23rd stitch. Okay, so we've got our stitch marker in the middle of our sleeve, and then we're going to mark it in the middle of our shoulder seam. So again, it's the middle of this row of treble crochets. So 
So just kind of attach it. I'm attaching it to the chain so that it doesn't really move around. And we'll do that. Next, you want to measure out to make sure that either end of the sleeve reaches the exact same point on the front and the back panel. So for this one, it looks like it's supposed to reach kind of the middle row of this section of three rows of the regular double crochet mesh. So that looks about right here and here. So then you're going to start sewing. So you'll cut a new piece of yarn. I like to do kind of like two lengths of what you're sewing, maybe a little bit more, just to make sure you have enough. Maybe two and a half to three. I don't know. I can never do it right. I always get the wrong length. And then put it on your needle. And you can do any kind of stitch you want to sew it on. I like to do a whip stitch because it's pretty secure. So what I'm going to do is because we have a row here that will make our lives a lot easier. So I'll start in the top of the row here and then go into the bottom of the row that we said was the meeting point. I don't know. And then you'll always want to leave a little tail end. Um, and then you'll just go around into this next stitch and then into whatever stitch is lined up with it. So again, like the single crochets, it's not going to be perfect. Just kind of do your best to gauge on where your needle should go. So again, around and then through the other panel. So at the end, sometimes I like to do just like another kind of reinforcement round just to make sure it's secured. And then that's it. So again, do this with the other sleeve, do the exact same thing, use your stitch marker, and then we can kind of sew the bottoms together so you have a fully functional sweater. So the reason we need it to be so exact with the stitch marker is because when we fold it over, we want it to meet in the same place because then we're gonna sew up here and then down the sleeve. So I guess I forgot to film this part, but basically after you've sewn on both of your sleeves, you'll fold your sweater in half like I did in the video in that last clip. And like you can see in step two in this picture here, and then you'll start on the bottom and then sew up the side of the sweater and then sew down along the length of the sleeve. Again, that part is highlighted in yellow in the picture. When you're ready to sew on your appliques, what you'll wanna do is kind of just lay them out where you want them on your sweater. And then once you have one that you're ready to sew on, you'll need some matching yarn and obviously a needle. And what I like to do to start is hold it down and then poke the needle through the sweater and then through the applique in the same spot. And that's basically what you're gonna do all the way around, just going down and then back up. So then we'll just go like over here. And you wanna make sure that you're going into like a stitch in the sweater and not one of the holes because there are a lot of holes in the sweater and then that won't keep it on and then you'll go back up through probably like here it's going to change for every single one that you do but so i'm just going through the pink and then the blue as well Then you kind of just do that all the way around the applique, whether you're doing this or the fruits or something else. And then it's not always going to connect into the pink because again, there's a lot of holes. So you can just skip over the parts of the applique that are over the hole. So I'm not going to sew back here because then I wouldn't be going into anything at all. So try to anchor it down where you can. And then just continue all the way around. Um, I didn't film an outro because <laughs> why would I? Thanks for watching. That's how you make this sweater-ish, sort of, for the most part. Follow along with the pattern. Um, again, check out my blog. More free patterns to come. I'm still gonna make probably paid patterns. Um, but who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.